Page 34. Dense macabre. Macabre. Whatever it is. Here they are introducing the natural sign, which is the third type of accidental. I've spoken about accidentals before in previous. Now we're getting it. It's the up to show the symbol there. It looks like an incomplete hash sign or something. I don't know what it looks like. Uh, but you see it there. And a natural simply takes out any sharper flat that you did have. For instance, in Dance Macabre, it's in F major. It's got one flat in the key signature, which means all B's are going to be B flat, automatic. Well, if you look at the third measure from the end on the first line, first line, third measure from the end, you see the half note B with the natural sign in front of it. Well, that means instead of the B flat, which the key signature is telling you to play, you're going to play a B natural. So it's canceling out the flat and the key signature for that note. Actually, it applies to that note for the rest of the measure and only. Accidentals all work the same way. They apply from the note they're on to the rest of the measure, and that's it. Once you get to a new measure, they're gone. They're... So that half note, B natural, right? Then you have a quarter note. It's also a B natural because the natural sign applies to the whole measure, right? Then in the next measure, you cross the bar line. It's a B flat. Now they put in a flat sign for you. They don't have to do that. They didn't have to do any flat sign there. The bar line itself, the measure line, would cancel out the natural, and you're supposed to play a B flat anyway. So the, it's nice of them to do that. A lot of editors and publishers will do that, you know, that remind you, oh, by the way, this is whatever. And they've done that here, but they don't have to, and some don't. It's up to you to remember. So you would have on the third from the end measure, it's B naturals and then B flats. A natural there. For instance, in the second line, first two measures in the left hand, you have a B natural and an A. In the next measure, another B natural. They have to have a natural sign there. If they didn't, you, you're supposed to put a B flat because the measure line cancels out the accidental automatically. Now, with all of these accidentals in here, this is going to sound a little weird. This piece, it's actually really nice. If you go listen to an orchestra of a, a, playing it in YouTube or wherever, it, it's really a neat piece. Now, when we start getting into accidentals, then the fingering can get a little tricky, all right? We have to be a little flexible. Don't get too hung up on fingering yet. So I told you before that when you have a, a position like this in a five finger position and you have a flat in the key signature, go ahead and put your finger on that flat because all of them are flatted, all right? Just understand that you may not always be using those fingers on those notes. For instance, take a look when the left hand on the last three measures of the first line. Take a look at the last three measures of the first line, the left hand. It's telling you, even though in this position, in that position, your index finger is covering the B natural and the B flat both, they're telling you to go ahead and put your thumb on the B natural, play it there, and the second finger on the B flat. They're doing that because they don't want you using the index finger for both. It's a little awkward. So you're just moving the thumb down one. You're not changing hand positions. You're just moving the thumb down one and using it. Now in the last measure on that B natural, you can go ahead and use your index finger on it now because it fits. All right? Use your thumb too if you want. I don't care. When you get down to the third line, the first measure, first couple of measures, so you've got the same notes you had up on the f first line, so you're going to use the same fingers. If you can't remember which fingers you were using, get a pencil. You should always have a pencil with you anyway, or when you're learning piano you should. And write in the finger numbers above those notes, like they did up above, so you, to remind you which fingers to use. Use the same fingers every time you play it. Don't be switching around. That just 
Oh, as you play this, you want to get to the point that you can play it without looking at the keyboard, okay? You got to get to the point where you just know which, which key on the piano your finger, which finger is on. You, you got to get that association going because they're going to move around a little bit and as they do, you got to keep up with all that. Uh, so work on that now because the music's only going to get more challenging as we go. Uh, when you're first learning it, you might have to look down and see what you're doing, but you got to get to the point eventually where you play it without looking at the keyboard. Now in this there is a one beat pickup. It's in 3-4 time. So let's give it a try. You do the dynamics on your own. I'm, I'm just going to play it. Okay. You can do the loud and soft. Right? It starts out loud and then second line you got a soft in there. Third line you got a loud again somewhere and you'll figure it out. So let's just try this. The left hand, your third finger is on A. So that's where it goes. Right hand, third finger's on a D. And now the hands are overlapping, so you can't really put them all in here, okay? You're going to have to get out of each other's way as we go through this. This should be interesting. Ready, go. One, two. Anyway, once you can do that, then let's go ahead and do the duet together. All right. Now, when we do this, you play the first note all by yourself. I don't start playing until the first full measure. When you play the half note D, that's when I play. Okay, so I'll give you two counts, and then you start, and then I'll come in too. So go ahead and put your hands up where they go, more or less. All right. Ready, go. Thank you. 